Good afternoon. We are Team Healthy Me. My name is Ivan Pham. I'm a master's student in mechanical engineering. My name is Evan Bylan. I'm a current master's social work candidate. Hi, my name is Pooja Yaramili and I'm a first year student at the medical school. Um, we are Healthy Me, an initiative which aims to implement a simple and cost-effective monitoring and evaluation tool for Philadelphia's Healthy Corner Store initiative. But before we launch into our proposal, I want to tell you a little story. A few days ago, I went to Wawa. I strolled in, I grabbed a fruit cup, and I headed to check out. The cashier scanned my items, I handed him cash, and fruit cup in hand, I got to class right on time. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this typical convenience store experience. The whole thing took a total of eight minutes. But in that eight minutes, what exactly happened? First, I selected a specific healthy item of the many that Wawa has to offer. Next, the cashier scanned this item and in doing so automatically deducted it from the store's inventory and recorded my personal preferences. Through similar processes, stores like Wawa are able to track purchasing trends with two main goals in mind. The first is to supply more high demand items, and the second is to figure out whether their attempts to affect consumption patterns through in-store displays, advertisements, etc. are working. And because the process is so integrated and automated, neither the customers nor the cashiers are inconvenienced. But if you were to step into any one of Philadelphia's corner stores, you'd have a markedly different experience. The majority of cor corner stores don't have any inventory tracking mechanisms. Why is this a problem? Why do we care? Because starting in 2004, the Food Trust and the City of Philadelphia started recruiting these corner stores for the Healthy Corner Store Initiative, which I will now refer to as HCSI, a project that aims to increase access to healthy foods in corner stores across the city. HCSI is one of the most important public policy and public health programs in Philadelphia. Of the 10 largest cities in Philadelphia, or of the 10 largest cities across the United States, Philadelphia ranks number one in obesity rates. Almost 70% of adults and over 40% of youth in Philadelphia are, are obese. And further geographic breakdown of these numbers reveal huge equity issues. 70% of youth in northern Philadelphia, which is predominantly home to low-income African-American and Hispanic communities, qualify as obese. These trends can in part be attributed to the fact that access to healthy foods is an ongoing challenge. In food deserts, healthy foods are often unaffordable and only available in supermarkets that are far away, while unhealthy foods are widely available in corner stores close to low-income communities and schools. HCSI has been successful in recruiting over 600 corner stores, almost half of which are located in the most impoverished communities in Philadelphia. Preliminary evaluations have shown that the availability of healthy foods in these stores has in fact increased. But our question is, has the increase in supply actually been met with a corresponding increase in demand? Two external evaluations by Temple University suggest that HCSI has actually had no significant impact on customers' purchasing patterns. But because we don't have consistent long-term data, we can't actually determine whether customers are actually buying the healthy products. In an attempt to address this issue, the Food Trust has distributed point of sales systems to only four corner stores. But these POS systems were difficult to set up are being used inconsistently and improperly by corner store owners and are expensive. Totaling $25,000 per system for installation and $40,000 per system for yearly maintenance. Our sources at the Food Trust tell us that these POS systems are complex, will not be scaled up, and are unsustainable. So we, Healthy Me, propose a simple, scalable, and sustainable tool for monitoring and evaluation. I'll hand it over to my teammate, Evan, who will walk us through the technology and implementation plan. So we're proposing a monitoring and evaluation system that will help store owners reliably track their inventory using a provided iPad and an inventory tracking software known as Shop ShopKeep. The idea is for owners to use this iPad to collect inventory data at the time of the exchange with the customer, which will then allow evaluators like us and hopefully eventually the Food Trust to look at this data from all of the stores that are actually using the software. 
So this flowchart illustrates the checkout process for purchase at a corner store that is utilizing our system. On the far left, you can see that the process begins when the customer is ready to purchase an item. The store owner then identifies this item, move along to the right in the chart, and selects it on the iPad, after which a method of payment is chosen, either cash, credit card, or EBT card, which the system is compatible with. The owner completes the transaction, and then his or her work is finished at which point, as you can see in the far right, an evaluator would look at the data um, using the ShopKeep system. For the owner's convenience, the product prices are stored within the system and price totals are performed by the program during the transaction. So it's a little less work for the owner. Evaluators can then access sales data from all stores using the ShopKeep program, which is uh, the inventory system that I've been explaining as the cloud-based management system. Whoever's monitoring can do so from any location as long as they have internet access. The idea is to identify trends in what's being sold with particular attention to the healthy food and then make suggestions for improving the healthy corner store program. We've created a five-step installment plan for each store that involves a qualitative assessment of the participating owner, an on-site setup of the iPad and software, mock transaction testing, and ultimately store owner training. Our idea is to implement the plan in four different phases. Phase one, we will develop the system in four stores over a two-month trial period. This phase will include consistent weekly check-ins with owners so that we can provide technical support, answer questions, maintain positive relationships with them, and also monitor their compliance. We'll advance to phase two once owners can demonstrate reliable use of the technology. Then in phase two, we'll plan to scale up the system. We intend to use the experience of the four pilot stores to introduce the system in 16 additional stores for a total period of six months. The idea is that we install the system in four new stores every month until we reach a total of 16. Phase three would occur during the second half of the year. And here we would continue to monitor the owner's usage and data input in all of the hopefully 20 stores at that point that are using the system. We provide ongoing support through consistent check-ins and follow-up as well. And in the last phase, we plan to comprehensively review our system and advocate for its adoption in the food trust. So it's of course a projected plan and we do want to emphasize our intent to be flexible and adaptable throughout the entire course of implementation. It would be ambitious to say that it's going to turn out exactly like this, and I'm sure you have some questions about that, which we can get to in a second. But the goal is to engage both store owners and the food trust using a system that works for everyone. As far as our budget, we project a total uh, cost of $18,500. We calculated this based on monthly software subscription and data for each phase, as well as the cost of the iPad. If the food trust were to adopt our system and scale it to 10%, of the total amount of healthy corner stores out there are about 65. Projected cost for one year is almost $75,000, which includes a one-time cost, which is on the left, that $13,000 figure almost, as well as annual maintenance fees for software subscription and mobile data. We can break it down further by looking at a one-year cost of one store using our system as compared to the current system being used by the Food Trust. So why is our solution important? Every public policy program should follow the cycle of implementation shown on this slide. It's very basic. But the way HCSI is currently set up, from our conversations, we've learned that monitoring is seen to be inadequate. So there's no way to really evaluate, learn, and adjust the program to improve outcomes, namely consumption of healthy foods and reduction in overall obesity rates. That's where we come in. The data collected through Healthy Me is extremely valuable. The food trust can pool data across all the different corner stores and analyze trends in healthy product sales. They can identify which healthy products are selling, which ones aren't, and identify the best performing stores. Alongside qualitative assessments of these stores, the food trust can use the data to identify which of the city's initiatives, such as healthy food advertisements, signage, and store layouts, affect purchasing patterns. And they can advise corner stores to stock the best-selling items to improve healthy food sales. Corner store owners can thus also increase their own profits. The Healthy Corner Stores initiative is a hot topic in public policy right now, and the model is being implemented and experimented with in other cities across the US.
but none of these cities have formulated a really strong monitoring framework. Our system can thus expand beyond Philadelphia to these other cities once our tool has been perfected. Thus, Healthy Me can ultimately optimize the Healthy Corner Stores initiative in Philadelphia and beyond and help it achieve its goals of building healthier businesses and healthier communities. Thank you. We're now open for questions. What's the food trust reaction to this particular initiative? Yeah, so we have had conversations with the food trust, and they are supportive of our idea. They would like to see the first phase come through, and after that, they would be. Um, it would be up to them to decide whether or not they'd pick up a program. So we hope to show that um, our solution is an efficient one and it's a cost-saving one. I'll just take that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'll just add to it. So uh, we have been in contact, constant contact with them, specifically with their monitoring and evaluation department. And uh, the team over there is in support of our idea. They have acknowledged a need for a better system than the, what they're using. Uh, understandably, they can't offer um, financial resources or labor, but they are on board for offering guidance. And as they have been, they've, you know, they've gotten back to my emails and my phone conversations. They've been you know, very supportive of our initiative. But um, so they they do want some someone or something to happen to improve it, but you know, understandably given their budget and time and things, they just they can't give us what we need at this moment. Can you talk a little bit about um, the store owners and um, what it would take to drive adoption and their reaction to this and what the impact would be kind of at point of sale for them? Yeah. Uh, yes, so uh, up here is a, it's a slide with the incentives we plan on giving to the store owners. First off, it's the appeal of the technology. We believe that that will um, first off drive adoption of um, like using the shopkeep system, just providing one, them with the iPad. Next is point of sale system to track inventory and uh, increase sales. We know that uh, business analytics will help drive sales and grow their businesses, so that's another incentive. And finally, the last one is advancement in the HC, HSTI rewards level. So there are different tiers of um, essentially levels that these healthy corner stores can achieve um, by the number of items they stock, how much they sell. And up there is some of the incentives they get. Um, and um, so, yeah, we believe that they will uh, eventually adopt their system. And just clarification, at the point of sale, mm -hmm. um, is this a, an additional step or is the iPad and a, re a replacement you know, using an iPad as a, essentially the, the register? Uh, so, right? yeah, so you, there are different methods of payments. There's cash, credit, an EBT. Uh, so, for example, for cash, um, it would, so a lot of them already have cash registered, so they would perform the transaction on the iPad, as in like select um, what, what item they're purchasing, then it would uh, coordinate with the inventory, and um, it would allow the food trust to track uh, what purchases are made and see, like, what, I uh, see the sales data, um, but uh, in terms of the actual transaction of cash, it's done either through cash registers or uh, through um, the credit card slider um, or EBT card for the reader. So. so I'd like to to pull back a little bit and ask for some help, help understanding kind of a, a fundamental question. Sure. The um, you know I totally bought the. Uh, discussion about how, especially in the context of some of the, the temple studies and kind of impact evaluations and the limitations that the data encumbered those evaluations with, um, we know that the, the corner stores and the initiative is increasing the supply, but it's difficult to know what's going on outside the store in terms of demand patterns over time because there's no longitudinal data, there's no really the fundamental check problem with these evaluations is that it's really difficult to form a expectation, right? You don't you don't know how much people should be buying, right? And given the the longitudinal limitations on the data, you don't know if particular people and communities and purchasers are in fact changing their behavioral patterns, right? So in a way, isn't this a really smart, greatly increased, in terms of precision, answer 
to a question that still doesn't give you any leverage on the thing you're most interested in? I think the, the main benefit that we're hoping to get out of this is that you'd also be able to see the breakdown of the products that are being sold. And there has been literature that shows that it's not necessarily just about increasing the category of healthy products in particular stores. It's about increasing variety and the types. So for example, a lot of people go to corner stores for grab and go items rather than for ingredients to cook with. So supplying a fruit cup may be more attractive than supplying onions. And so that's something we're also hoping to get out of this data that can drive the Healthy Corner Store initiative further is that they'll be able to identify those products as well and then by encouraging store owners to supply those products rather than these like onions and potatoes those types of things, they can actually improve product sales more. So we're hoping that it'll be a, a supplement to the Healthy Corner Stores initiative to help improve the more attractive items because they are actually competing against Doritos and Coca-Cola and things like that. So you want to try to get at what the consumers prefer among the healthy items. Um, to follow up, I think, I think the question um, that my colleague asked kind of started the answer that I'm hoping to hear from you, but I, I wanted to know a little bit more about why you think this type of hard quantitative data is necessarily better than the type of qualitative data that you could get just by asking store owners what's going on in their stores. I, I think it's fair to say that most store owners probably know what what is going out and what's staying in. You know, it, a lot of these are small businesses that these are the sole source of income for the proprietors running them. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, what is the benefit of these implement these expensive implementations that would lead to quantitative data that you can't just get through more temple studies? Right. So. One thing that we were looking at is the fact that many of these corner stores are very different from each other. They're in different environments, the layouts are different, um, and the food items that they supply are also very dis different, specifically with regards to the healthy foods. So it would be really difficult for these corner stores to actually be able to compare across all of Philadelphia. So we're hoping that the data can be pooled across different corner stores through this program so we can see and aggregate these numbers and see, okay, these kinds of products are selling and these aren't and advise accordingly versus if we were to just do qualitative studies the, and ask the corner store owners, they may be consistently only supplying like onions and potatoes every year through this program. And so they wouldn't actually know that the corner store down the street is doing better by selling apples and bananas. So we're hoping that this will also facilitate that kind of communication and the numbers will help get at that. Um, and it will also just generally help with the business development aspect of the corner stores, which is also one of the primary motivations of the Healthy Corner Stores Initiative. It's not, obviously it is mainly about the obesity issue, but in the, um, in the all of the write-ups about the initiative itself, it always says, healthier businesses, healthier communities, and we're hoping to tie in both of those in the solution. Can I just add real quick to that? So yeah, I mean, you're right. Obviously, I think in this case, qualitative data is more impactful in the moment, but the idea, I mean, to get to, to, get to this quantitative data, there's a pretty, it's a pretty influential uh, method. And so to get the data, which is quantitative, we give them this really attractive tool to get their buy-in, which would hopefully you know, allow them to start wanting to do well in their business and stocking healthier foods and feeling like they're leaders in their communities because they're helping you know, community members come and buy healthy food. So yeah, ultimately we're getting quantitative data, but it's kind of through like a qualitative incentive in a way. Question for you on the, um, the negativity of the technology. Have you thought about any of the repercussions that could happen by putting too much technology um, within the store and that could be a negative for the store owner? As well as are there fees associated with using the process through the iPad that the store owner is not used to using? And, it, and I still, and it goes back to your question earlier, is it still a separate system even when it's cash? You'll go run through the iPad and then where are you keeping the money? So get really like down to the grassroots yes. of like those couple pieces. Yeah, so we considered uh, several different options, not just ShopKeep. Um, we considered Square and Tracker, um, their inventory as well as POS systems. Um, but we ended up coming up with ShopKeep due to several factors. First was cost, is $49 a month, was, which was on the lower end of um, the cost for all other software available. Uh, we came up with usability, both for corner store owners and evaluators. Uh, we found that it was efficient for corner store owners. Um, it was essentially just five steps. And these steps are 
um, the ones they would take anyways without these without the shopkeep or iPad it's just that they have to manually do these steps instead of say do the calculations in their head or remember the prices like on the top of their head um, so in terms of number of steps it's um, the same uh, for evaluators um, we found that it was effective it got them the data they needed and it was easy to use as well so did we answer the whole question? Wasn't there a first part to that question too? Yeah, um, that? Have you thought about the negative implications of shopkeepers not wanting to have this type of technology within their store just because of the, the danger of having this type of equipment that's easily taken away and their responsibility for that? Yeah. And then it's an increase of $49 a month for the shopkeeper? Uh, yes, it's $49 a month per, um, per shop, per store. Um, so yes, we did consider some implications of having technology in the store. For example, the store owner could just as easily just sell device like on the black market. And um, so uh, we would, when we would first approach the store owners, we would clearly identify the incentives. And they, uh, essentially they can sell an iPad, an iPad 2 on the market for $200, or they could um, essentially move up on the HSCI um, tier and receive um, benefits such as like refrigerators, stocking units, which are just like financially uh, just much more than selling an iPad, as well as they could grow their businesses due to the data we're receiving and they are going to receive too from the food trust. Can you, can you um, just go through the, the numbers a little bit more? So the, the monthly charge for using the shopkeep is 49 yes. essentially $50, $50. And then do most of these stores, um, are they are already have internet access in them? So because they're mm -hmm. hooked up to the state, they have to have it? Or would that be an additional cost? Yes, yeah, so with the iPad, they would have to have data, a data plan. Um, so. Uh, the five, um, we initially laid out a five-step plan for um, setting up the system into the stores. And the first one was assessing the stores, um, like current infrastructure, which includes uh, seeing if they already have like cash registers, if they have, um, let's see, like data plan. And so we don't want to uh, spend extra money we don't have. And so yes, like up there, there's um, there's like phase one. It's two-month calculation based on tech and software costs. So there's the iPad. And there's a two-month shopkeep, uh, shopkeep subscription at $49 a month, and there's also two-month data at $30 per month. So that's essentially um, the high, the high end of the cost, right. assuming they don't have data. And the and the idea is for who pays for that is, um, you know, on a going forward basis, is that a cost that would be borne by by whom? by the shopkeeper at some point, or is it by the, the program itself? Uh, it's the program itself. It's going <clears> to <throat> handle it. Uh, who funds that? I'm sorry. Who funds that? Uh, the program? Yeah. Uh, so it would be through, um, like if we win this challenge, it would be, we would receive $5,000 <laughs> if we move on <laughs> to Pen Public Policy Challenge. Uh, uh, the to win. Next, <laughs> yeah, essentially the next um, competition, we'd get additional um, fifteen thousand dollars, and that already covers phase one. And um, for, uh, further on, if we move into the different stages, we'd hope to get uh, potentially um, labor as well, financial um, backing from the food trust if they decide to uh, implement so, it. Yeah. So just adding to that, obviously that's a challenge: is the money, because the food trust doesn't have, nor do they want, nor should they at this moment really give us the money to do this. Uh, we have reached out to many uh, funding either schools or programs or, or research organizations on Penn's campus. Some of them are up here. Uh, the CPHI, Center for Public Health Inif Initiatives, offers, you know, grants up to $10,000. If we write a good proposal, we would need a principal investigator to have our support. Uh, the school that I'm at, Social Policy and Practice, is open to granting uh, funds for us, given their budget considerations at the time of our request. Perlman School of Medicine, same thing. Uh, the Leonard David Institute, research-based organization at Penn, also open to availability. But we weren't able to get uh, core figures, and we could give them estimates low to high end, but you know, it's just way too early right now to actually ask for money. And so, yeah, so so I, you know, a, a bunch of our questions have been about this kind of qualitative, quantitative kind of line of inquiry, right? I want to try another one, um, which is the uh, you know a lot of what you're talking about is going on almost exclusively, really inside the store, right? And 
especially with Pooja's opening story about Wawa, you know, a lot of these collective incentives aggregate at a corporate level, right, outside the stores. Those cashiers don't know what's going on, right? It's, it's central that's reaping the benefit of this kind of system, right? Have you talked about, and, and that doesn't obviously connect up to the corner stores, right? But have you talked, or is there a place in your proposal for the, the common market or for any of the other wholesale operations, or even Cisco, actually, because it doesn't even have to be organic and local. It can just be regular old Cisco, whoever it is that's delivering this food in. Have you thought about the wholesale markets or any other way that kind of the, the returns to some of this aggregate information about in inventory control could actually incentivize you know, investing and supervising, and because as we've said, a lot of the corner store owners may not, you know, feel like they need anything other than their kind of rule of thumb on how the lettuce is selling, right? So, so just to be clear, you're asking about like a, a standard distribution method or something like that. That would well, really, it's it's actually inspired by your opening framing yeah. about how it's really something outside any one store that receives most of the benefits oh, for this kind of control system. And so I'm wondering what the analogy might be for corner stores. Right. So our analogy, we were looking at it more from the healthy corner stores initiative lens than the general corner stores. So because of that, our analogy would be the food trust kind of aggregating the data and analyzing it, going through it, and figuring out what those, like the best selling products are from their viewpoint is. Um, we did look at the distribution side of it, but the issue is that many of these corner stores, they go to different distributors every week. Like we went to talk to a lot of the corner store owners, and they say that you know, they just scan the prices of different distributors for a given week and pick the cheapest ones, or they send their husbands and wives to go and just pick up um, corn or whatever it is they're selling. So that's that's the issue of kind of looking at it more from the distribution aspect of it. So that's why we kind of our analogy would be more from the the food trust being the aggregator of the data. If that makes sense. Good. Thank you.